Welcome to Divine Way TV, where we talk all things real estate, money, motivation, and mindset. And today's special guest is none other than Bay Area's best, T. Gaskin. There you go. Man, man, come on, man. T. Gaskin, come man. On. I don't know you, man. man you know, it's it's all in the introduction, yeah. man. It's all in the introduction. Thank you for the love, baby. Man, well, you know, I, I'm, I introduced you, but Greg, let them know who you are. Greg Devine. Um, business partner, brother, and my little brother. Yeah, that's right. Big brother, because I'm shrinking, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, T, explain <laughs> the hat you got on. Damn, I, I actually brought you guys some hats. Oh, you did? I left them in the car. That's okay. a good excuse, right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, that's a I'm damn gonna bring them out for you. That's almost as good but, as a COVID excuse. You got a excuse. fitted hat. Yeah, I got a, a fitted hat. hat. That's yeah. sharp. I don't I don't know know if you guys wear them. Okay, seven and one yeah, fourth. Yeah, every you know, day. You guys are from Texas. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they wear these. Oh, <laughs> we wear the fitted hat. <laughs> this is the Builder T Gaskin hat. Where's your sweat brim? You're supposed to have a sweat brim from here to here. Oh no, this is the one just for the. Okay. This is for the show, but I got some real dirty ones. Okay. All right. Okay. Don't smell his hats. A little, a, little <laughs> more, <laughs> a little more than sweat. There's all, right. all kind of stuff on there. I told, let me, hold on. Let me pause this. Yeah. This is why we, this show is going to be rated R. Okay. Yeah. And this is uh check out the divine way merch on our website. It's rated R because it's restricted. It's not for everybody. Okay. But if you follow it, I guarantee the divine way will lead to a payday and it's led to Many a paydays for our special guest here, Mr. T. Gaskin. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yes, very, 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 very kind uh, welcome. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you too, man. Good to see you too, man. Give me a little. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's cheers because uh, I want to open this podcast with a very, um, a real subject. Because, T, I think you mentioned in one of our other YouTube episodes from last season uh, the story about your uncle or grandfather. Grandfather, yeah. Your grandfather. Do you mind sharing that? Because that's pretty powerful, man. Yeah, man. Well, sure, sure. I, I'm a First, let's, let's cheers, cheers to grandfather. Yeah, let's go My to, grandfather's yeah. name was Milo Gaskin. Milo Gaskin. We're going to cheers to him. Yes. Milo, Milo was Gaskin. A, yeah, he was a. There we go. A, you a know, pioneer. A pioneer in the in the real estate in all kind of businesses. And he was somebody that taught me that the, uh, whatever job you work, that job becomes your business partner. And so he was a, a police officer, he was a firefighter, and he used those jobs to, you know, create wealth for himself mm -hmm. and different opportunities for himself. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that told me that. Wow. You know? oh, wow. Yeah. And when, you know, when I, and so when I was in, in college, my younger, young years, I worked at Andronico's uh, supermarket. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Where's Andronico's? Where's Andronico's at? Yeah. There's one in Berkeley. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> I was a bagger at the supermarket and he told me like, you know, Use every every benefit that this job has to offer to improve your, you know, mm -hmm. your life and your situation. Yeah. And so, you know, I carried that with me mm -hmm. um, throughout my, my, my adult years. Yeah, that, that's wonderful to, to share with the audience. But there's something that th let me tell you why, you know, I, we wear the gold chain. You know, why are we flexing? this way in 2022 is because of your grandfather's story. Hold on, let me grab the chain. How much do you want this to be worth today, T? You want to be humble? Let's do, uh, let's do, let's do three mil. Three mil. We'll do three okay. mil today. Let's be humble. Let's be humble. <laughs> <laughs> and I know somebody out there saying, why do they do this? Yeah. It's because of, what was grandpa's name again? Milo. Because of Milo Gaskin. Okay, hold on. He said three million. Hold yeah. On. <laughs> what property are you going to? little beacon it's a little over three but close enough put a little beacon on here um eight units and uh another eight unit it, it's over three but the yeah, you know, know math like didn't four work. or five the math didn't work but you know what the point is we flex on these chains is anybody going to steal my chain though um i don't think nobody's stealing that chain I don't think they know what to do with that chain, gotcha. uh, Eric. They can't pawn it off. No, they can't. Got um, address on it. 
we're going to get a lot of tenant phone calls about breaking and entering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you we might have change to change a lot. A lot. Yeah. No problem. Change but a lot. I won't die over it. You nah. won't die over that change. No one's okay. taking it. And there's nothing on me that I'm going to die over either. <laughs> <laughs> smart move, Man. smart move. But the power of this chain and why we're doing this podcast, you know, some we're all in our 40s, right? Yeah. Yep. We have some old man on YouTube. Why are we doing this? It's because of Grandpa Milo. Because he was doing this before we were even thought of. And yeah. Grandpa Milo was trying to buy a property in the neighborhood, in the city of Lafayette. And, you know, when you, when you talk about generational wealth and you talk about black history and where we've come from, Grandpa Milo was a pioneer because when he was moving into that neighborhood and he had the money to buy the home, some of y'all didn't like that. And I'll let T tell the story. And 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 to correct you a little bit on it, please. It, there wasn't even a home there. It was just a lot. This it's was just lot. the land. Damn. Okay. So they grandpa, wouldn't, yeah. they wouldn't, I just want the dirt. Grandpa. <laughs> they wouldn't let him get the dirt. I Man, talk so, tell the story, T. You know, he he went in and First, he fought his way to buy the land. What year was this? Ballpark. Uh, I would probably say 50s. Okay, we're talking about the 1950s. So when you see us flexing on these chains, it's because this system wasn't set up for us to succeed. We had to work extra hard. If if we had the money to go buy the house in the 50s, we still were met with redlining, racism. Well, uh, a lot of these things were like they were writing in, there were deed restrictions that were actually, you can still see on deeds today that you cannot sell to a colored person. Colored. God although, damn, that's yeah. what it said back Although they're still on deeds today. You'll see them as you're closing if you read some of your stuff. A lot in Dallas, Texas as well. Um, Highland Park was in the neighborhood. I mean, La Vida, like Those are all neighborhoods. You get a lot of deed restrictions. So they're not enforceable, of course, because they're legal. Mm-hmm. But you'll still see them today. In and 2022. It, wow. Yeah, it feels good. I mean, when you see, I mean, if you do see something on your deed, I mean, that makes you feel a little better just to know that you're breaking breaking barriers right You're yeah like, so milo was like the jackie robinson he made it possible he yeah was. man <laughs> so let's jump right into the grandpa milo's story so you can let him know exactly what happened you let him know that it was in the 50s what happened what did he go so through? this was this is my dad's dad mm-hmm. and he was kind of a uh, a person that would just go out on a limb and do things and this was you know this was the 50s where people were, you know, they weren't happy about, you know, black folks moving into certain neighborhoods and and uh, doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And so um, anyway, he bought this property and he fought his way to even purchase it. Mm-hmm. And that was a problem. Mm-hmm. Then once he finally got it, he had to build it. Yes. You know, and, and he that's was, a whole nother oh. set of problems. That's a whole nother set Inspectors, of problems. Inspectors, all that. Uh, yeah. Damn, okay. You're that, dealing with the city, and yeah. you're the only person there, a uh, person of color that's there. They don't want you to succeed. Hell no. They don't, okay. they don't, you don't, we do not want you to be our neighbor yeah. in this okay. neighborhood. Okay. So it got to the point where Grandpa had to, had to bring in the law or, or get some help. He had, to right? get, he had to bring in attorneys, and um, the rumor is that one of his attorney was – Gavin Newsom's family mm. um, who represented him to you know be able to buy this property shout out to the Newsom family mm-hmm. for showing up when you know grandpa Milo, Milo needed you most right mm. Newsom's yeah. about their money they're about their money too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't free they didn't Gr- grandpa Milo Gr- up. Mi- no Milo paid all. <laughs> you know? Milo paid but y'all owe Milo some money man you need to get, give him some kickbacks yeah. stop playing but my grandfather wasn't the type of person that was, you know, oh, I was going to make it and <laughs> please keep your foot off of my neck. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was a very strong person in, in presence, in business sense. And so he brought value to everybody that he met. Mm-hmm. You know, he, you know he, everybody that came across him or deal, did a deal with him, mm-hmm. They came up in this deal too. I he see. was way beyond his time, and and his colleagues were not people that looked like him. Right. He built a big community that was uh that was that was very so very strong. Sounds like he's the type of person that will hire the person that's stopping him from building his house to actually work on his house. That's exactly what okay. kind of okay. person <laughs> he right. was. And so he didn't take things like that personally. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody was his giving him some sort of a problem, you know, 
he would fight it in a way that would benefit both of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's something that carried on to me and carried yeah. on to folks in our, our family. Mm -hmm. There's going to be plenty of people to fight in this world that's right. going to, you know, bring, attack you in certain ways. Um, and you can't take on every fight. Mm -hmm. And so you got to deal with it in a way that's going to benefit you. Yeah. You know, you're sitting in the millionaire chair right in front of the fireplace because your real estate game is on fire, right? Thank you, sir. Appreciate and what you've it. been doing has to be shared. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Let's toast to that. <laughs> Let me have another yeah. one. Yeah, we're, we're just just talking shit. We're going to get chairs into it. Yeah, yeah. 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 because I needed cheers. a sip. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're, the beauty of your story and the legacy of your grandfather is that it was ingrained in you in an early age that real estate is a route to building generational wealth. Yes, yeah, yeah, very very young. So my grandfather invested in a lot of properties when I was just a kid. Yeah, These are multi-unit buildings. These are in different areas. It, what he would do, so his story was he had, day, he had a day job as a police officer. Then he retired from that and then he became a firefighter. And, we, and then while he was a firefighter, he would invest in these properties with his earnings from the fire department. Yeah. Wow. And he, you know, back in the day, you could go to the auction in Oakland mm -hmm. and you can buy a house, you know, depending on the weather that day, who right. was there and what was going on up there. You can still do that, do that today. But yeah, <laughs> just yeah, a same, little more. Yeah. About the same price point. Yeah, there, there might be more people there at that. Oh uh, yeah, auction. yeah, yeah. And so he would buy these properties, and these properties were our first. You know, me, my brothers, and my cousins. These were our first um, buildings that we were able to work on. At what age? So you can let the audience yeah. know. When, um, when you're in front of these. I think I was probably, you know, between, f you know, 14, 15 years old. So 14, 15 years old, you're standing in front of uh, one of grandpa's buildings. And what do you do? What, yeah. what are you told to do? Well, there's tenants that live at these buildings. Yeah. And I would have to, you know, I was the maintenance. You know, I would go with my dad as the maintenance guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the sink goes out. Uh, these, weren't, these weren't always the best neighborhoods. For sure. So you could damn near be patching a bullet hole. In this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so have you patched a bullet hole? I I, I passed a bullet hole at one of my own buildings. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no lie. Story. And this is yeah. in 2020. Wow. Um, but yeah, I would go, you know, fix stuff. Um, sometime a tenant might move out, and I got to repair the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but you're just a kid. You what, don't really know. What did that bring you? Thinking thinking back to your younger self, were you doing swinging that hammer at 15 on someone else's part what, what did that bring you like what um, tell everybody else with the joy that or joy or, or I think it's just yeah. kind of like a, a a sense of accomplishment you know when you're a kid and you paint a wall that's the biggest you know that's a big deal that's a big deal yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh you a kid and you fix a sink on your own <laughs> And it ain't leaking. Yeah. <laughs> man, Dad, check this out. The no man, looking. I did this myself. Yeah. Man. I feel you on the no I leaking. I hear the lesson in this. <laughs> I hear the lesson. So what you were exposed to early was not only the real estate game, but you were exposed to uh, learning something you knew nothing about, getting your hands onto it, repairing it. And then that, what did that do to your confidence level? It did a, it did a great deal to my confidence yeah. level. You know, my, my grandfather was the boss and he was the landlord mm -hmm. and that means a lot to the grandchild the yeah grandkid mm -hmm. i'm going to this big building is full of people and he's the head guy and everybody wants to talk to grandpa everybody mm -hmm. man your your grandpa is and you get treated kind of you know in a, in a different light than you would if you weren't yeah mm -hmm. yeah right and so that same uh, energy passed down to my dad mm -hmm. You know, and so that's the only way I've ever thought was, you know, I want to own this. Uh, you know, how do I, you know, nothing less than owning this building or, you know, yeah. you know, buying it myself. Right, right. That's some good stuff right there. 
and I'm I'm fa- I'm getting a little buzz off this wine. <laughs> okay. So Greg, you might have to help you know kick well, in some questions along the way. Actually, I, I do. I was talking to uh, a few weeks ago. I was, I look, we were looking at a property to, to purchase in Berkeley, and the guy uh, I, I met a wholesaler there, and the wholesaler was selling the house, and there was like five different people that he actually thought he was talking to before he talked to me, mm. and it was just it was just a, just bef- when you get to the wholesaling game. They, they always call the wrong people until they get to the end guy because everybody wants a little piece from it. So yeah. I show up and I talk to the guy and he is, he's franchised. Um, you know the We Buy Googie Houses? It's not that mm. because that's a franchise. It's a different one. Mm. So he's pulling this wholesale game and I said, how many deals have you closed? And he's just like, I'm about to retire. I've been doing it for like a few years. I closed one deal. And I was like, okay, no big deal. Um, I said, you need to get yourself a side hustle. So we t- started talking about the side hustle. And this is going to get into the question. We started talking about side hustle. And he's like, you're the first person that told me I need a side hustle. Mm-hmm. And he, I said, yeah. But he said, so I'm thinking about going to get the shop. And I said, your side hustle needs to be in real estate. Mm-hmm. Because it, you don't make your side hustle something completely different than what you're actually trying to achieve in life. Mm-hmm. So when you get out there and you're out there and swinging that hammer, and um, how did all this stuff help you build what you built today? I mean, that's a real question. Well, that, 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 that's an that's a easy answer to that question because when you're working and I'm working on these projects, yeah, it's constantly generating income, right? I'll have a big house that I'm working on, and every month, or not even every month, every couple weeks, the profit on that property changes, on that project changes mm. because your clients, you know, they're wanting more. Right. So we our original estimate would be, okay, let's gut this out and we're going to remodel it. Okay. We want a kitchen, a bathroom and, you know, new floors. And that's it. As you go in that project, that changes. Right. The scope changes. So you give them the red bottoms. Now they want the Chanel purse. Yes. (laughs) Okay. okay. Let let me let me just tap in. because The audience is like, well, hold on. Investor flipper. You know, T. Gaskin is a jack of all trades. So what he has done is parlay his skills into now remodeling for clients. And you started out in neighborhoods that were a little shaky. Like you said, you patch them bullet holes. And now you're in multi-million dollar mansions with clients flying you all over the damn world to pick different look light different, fixtures yeah. And, yeah. and tiles. And shout and out to stones, those clients. And mo- mostly yeah, stones, yeah, not tiles. Are great. <laughs> yeah, it's actually my client's birthday today. So okay. happy shout birthday, out. Jason. Uh, yeah. 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 See, you only get that, Jason, because you're paying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him that. that char- you got to pay for that, Jason. It. No, he's you got to pay for that, Jason. He you does you... mind writing checks. Jason is great. <laughs> this, is the, this is the hot seat, and yeah. you pick the right guy for the job. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. So to the audience, T, you spend a lot of your time making clients' visions and their dream homes come true. Yeah, definitely. So back to Greg's point, they started out with the red bottoms. You know, we want that. And then what happens? And then as the as the house is being built, as we're, you know, finishing certain parts of the house, Mm -hmm. you know, you want more. You you know, you 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 start doing a little more research and decide, you know, I kind of, you know, like vaulted ceilings or kind of I'm kind of into this this is a new trend Mm -hmm. and so as much research as I'm doing my clients are doing the same thing Mm. and so you know we're just kind of collaborating with you know how could we make their dream just come true in this you know to the young man or woman out there that's listening to this there are a whole lot of different careers in real estate and you know you've made a career out of you know remodeling and bringing your client's vision, you know, to reality. What is the current job that you're working on? Give the audience a sense of the scope of work. Like explain that. What's the scope of work? I've got uh, three projects going right now. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's two mediums and there's a large. <laughs> yeah, kind of like so, my shirt. It's a medium. Yeah, this is yeah, medium it's and a, a large. medium. I apologize. Yeah. So, you have to sit I through mean, this. I mean, I'll just start with the large one I'm doing. Okay. It's a seven. Um, it's a seven thousand uh, square foot uh, house, house mansion, pretty okay. much. So somebody drops multi million dollars and they're like, 
They want to change everything. Again. Sounds like yeah. they're fixing up a fixer upper. <laughs> like they're <laughs> well, fixing up a non fixer upper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. This house was only built 15 years ago. Okay. And so, you know. That, it, did it I bring it? Yeah, granny kind of caught top with the, with the flakes? <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So I, when, yeah, I, <laughs> when I first walked in, it, it's kind of hard to, you know, put yourself in their shoes mm -hmm. and see what they see because they're rich folks. Yeah. And so you got to kind of you are too though. Come out of what? Um, <laughs> you know, there's levels to rich. Okay. Okay. You guys are rich. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but your clients are literally wiping their ass with dollar bills. Basically. Okay. Completely. Com somebody else is wiping their ass. With <laughs> okay. All right, somebody else. <laughs> and so you know you got to kind of come out of what you're used to and think the way that they do. Mm -hmm. And so what's old to uh, them may not be old to you. Mm -hmm. And so my whole strategy here is, okay, let's give you the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we, you know, what do we need to do to get, you know, get thinking just bigger and better and do, you know, we'll get you the best of the best. Yeah. And that's what's been happening. You know, we've been, we're, we've been on this, that project yeah. for a while mm -hmm. and I'm juggling the other projects. Uh, but this is a fun one. The clients are great, yeah. and so, you know, I've been spending more time there. Okay. You know? yeah. That, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Beautiful. yeah. So that that's really cool because I I wanted to touch on the different careers that you can choose in real estate. You don't just have mm -hmm. to be an investor. Right. You know, you can be an architect, an engineer, a contractor, uh, appraise. You can do appraisals. So there's lots of careers in this game. Yeah. For the definitely. young audience that's watching. So I have, um, you know. I got a team of guys that work for me mm -hmm. and then I have subcontractors mm. like plumbers yeah. and electricians, mm -hmm. HVAC guys, people doing the heating and air condition and all those careers are great, uh, mm -hmm. great careers. Mm -hmm. The ele an electrician, if you're uh -huh. um, just an electrician alone, your base salary could be $200,000. Yeah. Can, can you, yeah. 200,000 yen? I mean, uh, 200 no, pesos? No, 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 no. Pesos. For a trade. They, they call it a trade. That, <laughs> that is, that is well. 200,000, yeah. no. No, because yeah. there's a kid right now who's like, you know, their, their mother is saying, you know, or their father, or, or they think they have to go to the, the league to make a living. Or, right. or to a four year. You don't have or, to go to Stanford to. Yeah, or right. they got to yeah. go to college. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, I always advise, I always advise. Please come back to mom. Please. You know, thank you. Youngsters will go for the trades because the trades. Yes, yeah. there's yeah. a lesson in this because, you know, it, it's there's a young kid right now that's being told that college is the only route, and you would right. argue. What? And I went to college, and it wasn't the <laughs> the best route. Mm -hmm. My client that I'm working for um, out here at this big mansion we're talking about, he's a high school you know, drop out with a lot of brains, a lot of sense and a lot of hustle. Yeah. And so, you know, when it comes to the trades, yeah, you know, you guys know this just as much as I do. I'm sure you pay your electricians, your plumbers. Yeah. And when you're writing those checks, they're big checks. Yeah. They have mm -hmm. lots of zeros, lots of zeros. Yeah. And so you look at your, you know, I look at my, um, spendings for my business at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I can cut on those, uh, th on those charges, yeah, yeah. I'd be a, a lot richer. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> mm. So that's good. That's a good lesson for the audience that, you know, really consider a trade, whether it be electrical, plumbing. What are some other trades that they, they need to know about um, that you write big checks? To? Well, there's hardwood floor installers like, you, you know, the floors that we're sitting on now, I guarantee you, um, you probably spent, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars to install these, and it took them three days. Mm -hmm. How did you know that? Because I do it. <laughs> 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 and so, you know, you, you, for a good guy or somebody, you know, I would say start out young, mm -hmm. start painting young, start learning how to do this stuff at a young age. You start when you're 16. By the time you're 26, you're a professional. Mm -hmm. You're a professional getting professional money. Um, Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, I, I started um, doing kind of everything, 
right? The plumbing, the electrical, the paint, everything. And so it takes a lot longer to learn it all. Mm -hmm. But if you focus on one thing and you want to build a company and do that, yeah. you can easily do it. Mm -hmm. Let's give a shout out to uh, Elevator um, Repair pe People. Elevator Mechanics. Yeah, we pay yes. them, uh, yeah, we pay you quarterly $360 just to look at our elevator. And then we just wrote you a $10,000 $10, check to get the sub pump out and get this shit running again. Wait, you said 10, wait, you called me, hold the, hold the fuck up. Yeah. Right <laughs> hold the see, fuck this, up. We, don't, <laughs> we, hold we up. have different roles. Hold up, yes. hold up. You called me yesterday. This mm -hmm. is live and this yes. is just unedited, okay? This is real mm -hmm. shit right now. You called me yesterday and you said, Eric, we have a little water underneath our, we have a property with an elevator in it. Yeah. Wait a minute. How do you, how many units do you have to have to have a property with an elevator? One in building it? can have a property with an elevator in it. <laughs> how tall is your building? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. My bad. But let's yeah. just talk about one. I don't one. have no buildings with okay. elevators. But this okay. one has, our, some of our this is the first building with an elevator. And they can't be going upstairs. <laughs> yeah, this is the first building so, with the elevator we brought. Right. So shout out to Thick Ankles. I do. <laughs> like Thick Ankles. Uh, but that will, I digress. But we have a property with an elevator. My brother calls me yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm busy doing other stuff. And he says, yeah, I got to write a check for like $2,500 mm -hmm. to repair, to put, to the, uh, put a, sub a wine, pump. to put a sub pump <laughs> ah. in the bottom of the elevator because it was collecting water right. from all the rains that we've had dr and drain it to the sewer line and he you told me twenty five hundred dollars twenty five hundred dollars but you don't understand that we have a yearly annual city of Oakland goes by and inspects our elevator so that was just one of the issues that they called out in the elevator they also called out um oh the phone line to at&t somehow it didn't get connected it was a bunch of they, i got an item list you, you told and the item list the, was ten we had a ten thousand dollar day yesterday? yeah because yeah because the we have the that sub pump was just a sub pump installation, so we'll never see water in the bottom of the okay. elevator again. Yes. But there were five, they have to do a load test. Hey, come to your, your building if you have an elevator, and they put pretty much bags of concrete to get a load test and make sure that the when the elephants get on your elevator, yeah, thick they, ankles. Shout out to thick ankles. I know you. Know. <laughs> it can make sure it can hold the load. Yes. So let me get this right. Yeah. Y yesterday, you guys spent ten thousand dollars. Yes to a person that's fixing your elevator. Yeah, but we, and I just saw an invoice because they still gave us a quarterly $360 inspection test that mm. we get quarterly. And then on top of that, we write them a check for something else. And then but how I, long, did, how many hours, how long did it take him to do the job to, to earn that it, money? It, 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 was, it was very minimal, yeah. They, already, minimal. Yeah, they were shocked that we got it so connected so fast. And so yeah. this guy that's building the floors, He's about eight thousand yeah. dollars for three days. Yeah, yeah. This guy's that's doing the elevator. Elevators. It's a name your price on the elevators. He's about so like two companies. Let's say he's ten thousand yeah. dollars in one day, and so that's just you know that's something to you, think about when it comes to absolutely. choosing a career. You and said these it. careers, you don't have to have, you know, you, you don't have to have a certain you know education or degree. You don't have to be a a, a brain surgeon. To do these things, but you do have to have work ethic. Yeah. You know, you got to be somewhat smart. You got to know how to deal with clients. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to be punctual. Uh, pun how do punctual. you punctual? When you're on time? Yeah, punctual. Wine, yeah, you got to yeah, be punctual. Punctual, punctual. on time, present yourself. You know who's right. on time? Thank who's you. That? Who's the person that makes we the most money? We forgot how to say punctual. <laughs> <laughs> you show them when you want. Hey, that's hey. how it works. <laughs> I don't know if y'all see it on my face, but I'm sure really works. upset right now. Why is uh, that? Because we had a $10,000 day yesterday, and I was thinking about buying rims for the car that's on the way. Yeah. And, yeah. and the rims for the car, because I'm, I'm colored, you know, I'm still, I got the chain do on. That. You know I'm colored. <laughs> the rims are $25,000. We did okay? the right. rim thing already. What are you, right. you thinking of spin? You're going to spin wheels? You're going, you back, to no, the, no, going no. back to the, the 90s? Are gonna be, this is a company <laughs> car now. This is a company car, so we have to make sure the car looks right. Right. Know? Right. It's like it's like anything. Yeah. You know, you got to see it. It's got to be pretty. But twenty five thousand dollars rim is probably the so worst. So let me ask you guys. I know I'm the one. Well, now I'm rethinking. Here. Yes, you are. But at <laughs> what point? At what point did you guys decide? Okay, I got enough money to where I can buy a nice car. Mm -hmm. You know, I can actually spend on the car that I want. I never gave a fuck. He didn't My, give a fuck. Yeah. yeah. He, we, we, we had the first condo we bought in Dallas, Texas. We lived in that story. three-story that townhouse. Hilarious. I got a signing bonus. Eric wasn't working. Right. So, but it was both of ours. So I took the signing bonus and 
prior to getting the prior to like sp- getting furniture in the house, we went to Walmart and we got lawn furniture. <laughs> Damn. And we lawn we're living furniture. in like next door to Steve Nash. And we got lawn furniture in our house. This is in Texas. Yeah, this is Dallas, in Texas. Texas. This is in yeah. Dallas, Texas. And we're just trying to fake it till you make it so we keep, keep those blinds closed so no one can see. <laughs> and now the signing post is finally hit. So it's like time to go buy some uh, some furniture. So we go to a nice place, buy some furniture. Um, Eric finally gets a job. Finally. Um, and I was like, all right, uh, I've been we've been paying the mortgage at the beginning. Yeah, I've been paying it. And then Eric gets a job and he goes and comes back with a three series BMW. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, no. I pulled up, first I pulled up in a Lexus. I don't know what it was, but oh, it was like a spaceship. Yeah. This is the year 2000. I pulled up. So I went to the dealer, and shout out to Good Credit, because if you got good credit, they'll give you the keys. Right. No, they will allow day. you to ruin your credit. Yeah, so this is yeah. an important lesson, too. Keep your credit sharp, because they saw a young black man. I was 22 years old. I had a jerry curl. I yeah. was looking so fresh. Right. They said, here you go, son. Here's the keys. Yeah. I shot over back to the condo townhouse to see Greg. I pulled up, his face dropped. He hadn't paid shit in six months. Been living there six months. For, for <laughs> his face Damn. dropped. So hey. that's the, that. To your question, it's like this is the perfect balance, yin and yang. Like, yeah. It's like with mm-hmm. anything. Like I'm, I think we can do whatever we put our mind to, right. and my brother thinks we can ever do, we can only do what our budget tells us to do. And right. so that combination has led us to answer your question to get us where we're here today. Where we get to the point where you know, if you yeah. want a new car, go get one. Well, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Walking in here today, I, I passed a your car, probably hundred fifty thousand dollar car, yeah. and thank you. Uh, and so you got this choice: mm-hmm. do I buy this or do I go buy this mm-hmm. beat up building in Concord that's going to bring in, you know. I'll put a good. I could. I, the way I can answer for okay. th- this one is, I mean, we like all our buildings. We started are all like DP. So yeah, we we're making a lot more money in in East Oakland than we are like currently in like the Lake Merritt areas. Right. So just, but they lived with us. I mean, my tenants lived with me. They lived in my brain. They yeah. like at night couldn't sleep. I knew they were gonna call me. I knew that. I mean, it was just it was work. Right. So then like. How am I going to feel showing up and then not even going to my building, driving something that I feel nice in? Yeah. So now I, I drive a piece of shit. Yeah. I show up to a piece of shit and I talk to and I feel like a piece of shit. And everybody's a piece of shit. And that's my life. It's eventually you got to say, fuck that. Yeah. Be- and show up in the car you want to right. and, and, and live your own life. And I mean, we transitioned out of that. But it, it, as soon as I thought it was it was affordable that I didn't. I mean, what a fifteen hundred car payment is not bad. Right. That's when you think, like, when you go and you buy milk, and you're like, you know what, milk, the price of milk is not bad. Yeah. That was, the, that was for me. That's when I got it. Right. Right. So I just never for looked at the price tags. If I want it, I'm going to get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I feel about life. If right. you want it, if you want it, go get it. And it's just like, oh, well, you don't have it right now because you don't want it bad enough. You right. Know? That's the way I feel about life. Like, you, yeah. you get what you want if you want it bad enough. Yeah. That's why we're getting robbed in the streets. Let's see. Wait, hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> Don't just hold go on. get what you want. No, but, but look at me. Y'all want to see my damn shoes? Look at them. Look. Look. Eric, don't show those shoes on camera. No, no, you like my leg kick? That shit hurt. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's back to T. Let's get back to T. T, no, that was a I'm great question. Up. Yeah. And yeah. You no, I'm a, just yeah. wondering because yeah. I'm looking. And yeah, you're looking. Yeah. Yeah. T, it needs to be comfortable. I, this is That's what, what I'm I see saying. T in, and I, I know T sees himself in this, a G wagon. No, no, I love G wagon. You're absolutely uh, right. Yes, I got a funny story on the G wagon. Okay, okay. please tell. You know, you guys' guest that you had on here uh, uh, last week or so. Keys. I do. Yes. Key, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash out. Yes, yes, Shout out to Cash out. So Keys had a about a hundred thousand dollar G wagon back in the day, mm-hmm. and this is this is when. I was first kind of getting started in my investment journey. Yeah. And I drove a Prius. Absolutely. Yeah. And my Prius was my work truck. <laughs> okay. Oh. Because it had a hatchback. I would put lumber in there. I was I was just getting started. And so I would go on, you know, I had a nice date coming up. I had to go on a date. And I said, Keith, man, I need to borrow the G-Wagon. He said, all right, cool, man. I'm, I'll take the Prius. 
And so he drove the Prius and I took the G Wagon. Yes. That's called having good connections. Good friends, good so connections. Go I ahead. was driving Priuses before. I spent my last ten thousand dollars on this Prius. Yeah. Because I didn't have to pay for gas. This is before everybody was buying Priuses. This is in yeah. two thousand six. Okay. And so I'm driving this Prius and we trade. And this is a date. And I end up keeping his G wagon for about two months. Oh, because you didn't know it was eight dollars a gallon, Wait, <laughs> eight, no, eight miles per now, gallon. No, this is a whole second. Now the date. Shout yeah. out to all the ladies okay. out there yeah. that are saying, so "Okay, you my show man got a G wagon." Yeah. So for it, two months, it was for two months. It was free, and it wasn't even. Mom. So you could go on multiple dates with this same person. Well, I was like, yeah. So, <laughs> well, he didn't want the he didn't want the G wagon back. Mm. Oh, but this Tell is him why. A, because he wasn't spending any money on gas. Got you. And so when I turned it back, he was always called me like, man, I need the Prius back. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, so soon after that, he bought a Prius. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so, he's been in one ever since. Man, I'm the Prius originator. You are, yeah. Okay, all Tell right. Tell me somebody who had a Prius before me. You could think As so a work truck, mm -hmm. though. As, As a work, a, well. That shit might have been dragging with some heavy loads. Man, huh? it was dirty, man. I had dust in it. Yeah. You know, and now that. <laughs> I can afford the G wagon, yes. and uh, you know I can buy the car that I want. You know it kind of feels, you know I kind of feel a little strange about it. Wasteful. <laughs> like it's wasteful, like it would be wasteful. Yes, yes, it's wasteful. Well, like you say, the per the payment on a hundred fifty thousand dollar car is fifteen hundred bucks. Well, it's a little different, but go ahead. That's it, well, yeah. something like it, that. It might be right. around two thousand dollars if you don't put it. Yeah, it's around twenty twenty three. So what right. size building can I buy for fifteen hundred dollars a month? That's smart. What's my yeah. mortgage gonna be for fifteen hundred a month? You know, so you know, some of you guys have been doing this forever. You guys got mm -hmm. buildings bigger than uh, you know, you could see. But for the guys that are just getting started in this Think about those real, you know, think about those hard questions. Okay, what can I do with this, mo with this money I'm sending off to this company every single month? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I consolidate this and turn it into a mortgage payment? That's smart. And add to your portfolio. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of things I say to people, just like, just like you're saying, is if you go and make an investment in yourself, which is, could be, I mean, most likely it's going to be real estate, and your real estate is bringing in $500 a month, and at that same time, you can afford a BMW, you can go and get a $600 payment and technically know you're paying $100 because you got that income offsetting it. Mm -hmm. So now oh. you have a $100 BMW right. a month. Uh, <laughs> so, did you, I mean, that's a way I figure out a lot of things in life, and that's exactly how you're saying it. Yeah, right. that's. But a, a huge lesson in your story with Akis is that um, you've got to have, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, um, because I'm on this wine, it's the word I'm looking for is like self-control. Yeah. You, you've got to have a, a vision and be working towards something so that every dollar that you spend, you reinvest in the real estate until it gets to the point where it's just stupid. Right. Yeah. And you can make stupid decisions after that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like these $25,000 wins I'm about to get. Yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. show you a picture of them. That's Ooh, a, five, yeah. uh, right now rims? we can. You know, no, four rims. Five rims? I'm, I'm, okay. a, I'm a member of the Cadillac with the fifth wheel on the back? Yes. No, that's just being wasteful. <laughs> that, I'm not going to do that. That would be five rims. Anybody that's, that wants to make an investment in three years from now, he can, he's going to sell those rims to you for $400, $450. Fact. They're going to depreciate. Yes. <laughs> Log on, find his rims. If they can fit you, if you're on Craig's the right list, offset, be on Craig's list they're going to be, three, yeah, you got, well, you maybe yeah. $1,000. Yeah, that's it. So That's uh, hilarious. Plummet. Business decisions. So, that's why I love my brother. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We got a question from our beautiful studio audience that asked if you have little money and your you know new credit, bad or good, what is it? How do you get started in investing? Little money. Mm -hmm. Little credit. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get started? What How, would you do? What's your circle like? Do you have Ooh, the, the, that's a there, there you go. You're what, you're going the right. Yeah, yeah you're going the right. What what's your what's your circle like? You gotta build a team. If I you're mean, solo bolo, yeah, you made a you better you make already a, made a bad <laughs> decision. You already yeah. made a bad you decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta have um, you, you gotta have you know 
you got to have a personality um, that allows you to reach out mm -hmm. and allows you to gain this information. And so there's plenty of people that, you know, that have done what you're asking uh, uh, to do. And how do they do it, though? You, right. you said reach out. You have to grow your circle. Yeah, you got to grow, grow your, 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 search will, your circle. And first, you got to fix your credit. Nobody invests in somebody with bad credit. You got bad credit, that means I'm not going to get paid. Ooh, ooh, lesson. You mm -hmm. know, you guys, uh, you guys actually called me, both of you guys called me with deals uh, like last month. Mm -hmm. And these were buildings that were in the millions. This was, mm -hmm. yours was 1.2. Yeah, yeah. The, the other so one was that, yeah. somewhere in the ones. Mm -hmm. And you said, T, give me a down payment, I'll carry this this loan right and you wouldn't do that if you didn't think you was getting your money back correct and so that applies at every level mm -hmm. in, in 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 your friends your family so you owe somebody ten dollars and they say give it to me on the first give it to to them on the first next month they'll give you 20. Mm -hmm. and so if you got no money you know, you gotta go borrow some. You gotta go get some. No bank is gonna give you any kind of type type of real estate That's without no money. A huge point right there. Yeah, and to your point, we come from Texas, and Texas is very simple: pay what you owe, and you can borrow some money. We do we do a handshake. <laughs> we do handshakes all the time. You do a but handshake. Yeah, deal. handshake. That, because like, yeah. yeah, you just know who who someone is after you shake that hand and be like, and they don't pay you back, like. Right. So yeah. integrity is crucial if mm -hmm. you're just starting out. If you don't yeah, build, absolutely. try to build your your um, investment education and growth off of uh, taking from people. Finesse in one person. Yeah, finesse, you're you done. Finesse, if you're a finesser, you're, you're going to finesse a few, right. but you're through. Right. You're not yeah. going to make it. I mean, it. You, if you're a finesser, you're going to finesse your entire life. That's it. You're, you're, not, you're never going to build, get past a certain level in life because it's all about meeting new people. And, and finessing them real quick. And, and let me just try, so. to all you finessers out there, I've been had before. Yeah. And the way I see it, if you get me for 5000 it was a $5,000 lesson. Yeah. And that would be the last $5,000 you get. Yeah. Because I'm not focused on that $5,000. i am trying to, I'm talking $500 million, Right. You know? That's where my head is at. So yeah. finessers, you have a shelf life. You understand that? You have a shelf life. Yeah. Talk to him, Eric. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got I'm, a shelf life. <laughs> you got a shelf life. You like milk. Yeah. You know, that shit spoiled. <laughs> Nobody wants you after that. Yeah. So see, and if you hick you, you stick around us, you know, we like lotto tickets. You, you got to, I mean, we change your life in one paycheck. Th Greg, that's, know. that's a, a lot of people don't understand that the whole credit rating is not really for it. It's for people that are trying to, to be, to build themselves. It's for people that are trying to create in life. Like we know people that are multimillionaires who have like they don't the shit credit they don't care because they can they, they have a circle around them that we we don't really, we lend money to each other it's like you oh what are you gonna do I'm gonna I'm, I need a million I'm, it's gonna go here okay no problem it'll be wired um, what interest are you gonna pay me it's all after you get to a certain circle everything changes with that mm -hmm. I mean Eric can get someone to wire 500k right now right. and we'll just look at it and wire it right back. Mm -hmm. But it's it's so that's a new circle. Like I mean, you had shit credit at one point. Did I really? Yes. Remember, you fought with your student loan. You said you paid them, and you and they said you didn't. So you decided to go on strike. Mm. You know what? I'm just built different. I've been fired <laughs> from 18 jobs. Yeah. Okay. I'm probably undiagnosed. Got special needs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's put it out there. And I'm okay with it. But, I remember that. But you know what? I've been fired too. <laughs> <laughs> but here's one thing that I do. If I borrow from you, I pay yes, you back exactly. with interest on the day we agreed. I've been doing that my whole life. You built your shit credit much later in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I that. mean, we, we went through the recession, great recession of 2008 and 2000. Yeah. So, so, you know, we made some investments that didn't work out. So you take L's, but you turn them into lessons and you move, you keep moving. Yeah. So we're not sitting up here acting all high and mighty like, We've got it all figured out. No, we've taken L's. Right. You know, and, and, and in the L department, give us a story of your, your biggest L's. The one um, that comes to mind first. My biggest L, okay, I have a huge L that I took. I bought a house when this is a big regret of mine and in in, in kind of a something that stuck with me and, and, and um, 
kind of plan it the way I think right now. Okay. Right? I bought a house in two before the big crash in 08. Okay. okay. I think I was probably like 25 years old. I bought this house. It was 550000 I fixed it up. It went up to like seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. Market crash, mm -hmm. I lost a house. Mm -hmm. During that crash, there was a house across the street from mine. This is a big, beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood, and it was 200 something thousand dollars. Wow. And I didn't have the money to buy this house because mm -hmm. I was so young, and then I, I invested all my money into the other place, fixing mm -hmm. it up. And so I say, okay. Now, I've got to have cash on hand. You know, a lot of a lot of investors, they move with credit and they move with certain uh, ways to get, obtain properties and do mm -hmm. things like that. But cash is king. You know, you, uh, you, and uh, there's a lot of guys that are very creative with it. And they can always get things. They can always figure out a way, okay, how do we get this? But... I always stack for a rainy day. There you mm -hmm. go. And that was a rainy day that I missed out because that place is worth probably, you know, a million dollars right now. Yeah. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars went to a million dollars. Mm -hmm. well, more. Yeah. We're in the Bay Area. Yeah. 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 And I pass it all the time. You pass it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you look at the look at you. You can like, see the eyes. That, that's, that's PTSD. And you yeah. Need some help. You yeah I might need some therapy. You I might need some therapy. Uh, Whoever can provide T some therapy, okay. like reach out, comment down below yeah. on mm -hmm. different ways that you can provide T some therapy. Mm -hmm. That was a major that. ill. Major yeah. ill. Major okay. ill because I could have bought it easily. Yes. Very cheap. It's a lost opportunity, yo. I lost okay. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You Got know, it. let's, you know, shout out to the audience for staying in this to, to this point. You know, we appreciate you. Uh, comment down below if you want to ask T any questions. If you have any comments, we really appreciate that. It's good to help us gauge our podcast and provide some feedback. So, Greg, you know what? We talked about a few things today. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you feel like we're leaving out, T? Yeah. What? what um. What do they need to know about you? What do the audience need really, to know about you? Really, I think you? what we met here for today was to teach our audience something. Mm -hmm. And I think our audience is a wide variety of people, right? But I think we want to reach the younger, the younger folks. Yeah. That's what I always look towards. How can I show somebody younger than I am to kind of kind of structure their whole career and their life. Yeah. What would you tell the young T. Gaskin, the 22-year-old young or the 18-year-old young T. Gaskin? Yeah. What would you tell that guy? I, I would say find mentors um, and somebody that really cares, uh, uh, you know, that's going to physically show you the ropes and not kind of tell you, mm -hmm. right? Cause we, yeah, and that's huge. You know, f folks tell us stuff all the time. Hey, yeah. man. Invest in Bitcoin. Yeah. And we're like, bro, how? Yeah. You know, oh, just go here. And so, you know, if you find you're the right mentor that actually, you know, has the time to, um, you know, actually teach you how to do it. Mm -hmm. I got a guy that's starting, that started working for me yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's just a little younger than me, but it's like, okay, we're about to be on this journey yeah. where I'm going to show you how to do this. Yes. And, you know, a lot of youngsters, they kind of need that. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're, they're, they're driven already. They're sitting at their apartment, their house, their mom's house, and they want to do it, but they kind of just don't know where to start or where to go. Good advice. Yeah. So, I, you know, I would say find you a mentor. Find what you're really interested in, yeah. whether it's, um, you know, Whatever it is, right? Whatever nope. it is. Graphic design, art, mm -hmm. teaching, music. And go find somebody that's a professional at that and try to tap into their world and see if they'll take you under their wing. Right. And don't walk in there all high and mighty like, I want $30 an hour. I, yeah. You know I, have yeah. A, I have a good example <laughs> of this. Yeah. Know your value, but also know the value that you're getting. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people say, like, work with somebody. and work. No. Everyone needs some kind of living wage, but, but still like if you're getting 
so much on the back end. I mean, you got to understand like what you're actually receiving. I mean, I was just talking. I was at um, uh, talking to a new uh, like wholesaler guy, mm-hmm. and he uh, he said, if I bring in this house, um, what what are you gonna give me? And I was like, I'll I'll give you thirty percent, like net. And his response was, I have found something to give me 50%. I was yeah. like, okay, well, how many flips have y'all done? He said, none. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, come <laughs> yeah. on, man. Like, yeah. what do you, yeah, yeah. Zero point zero. Just like, and that's, some of the generation that I'm dealing with yeah. are like that. Just make sure you're not. Yeah. Just, yeah, you haven't done shit. Like, just know. <laughs> if you haven't made your first million, <laughs> yeah, don't go exactly. there don't, that and a, you can call, you know, a you, shot caller. Just right. we clown on the like, back. We clown in. shit. You know, yeah. we started at the bottom and we didn't mind it because that mud, we got out the mud. You know, we learned the hard way and we learned with zero dollars in our pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're not willing to, to, uh, to your point, understand the value of the information you're receiving and you think you need $30 an hour just to sit there and learn. Right. Middle finger up, come to you. <laughs> that's what they're going to do. That's just yeah. being honest. And that, that, but that's the problem with social media and Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know, you see somebody with a million dollars and you you don't really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of... They don't know the journey. You don't know the yeah. journey and what it, what it takes to get, you know, w- you know, what you're trying to accomplish. But I would definitely say that. I would say find you a mentor, um, find what you really are interested in, and then tap into the real source that's going to help you get to, to, to the bottom man, line. We appreciate that. We've got a couple more questions, and we're going to wrap up the co- podcast because we have another bottle of wine to finish. All right. Um, you know, let's talk about finding partners in life because there's a lot of young men and, and women out there that are trying to pick their partner. And I like to talk about real estate and relationships for just a few minutes. Mm-hmm. What did what did you feel about, you know, just aligning your energy, aligning, mm-hmm. you know, can you speak on that for a minute? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I just bought a building with a partner and who I didn't know very well prior to this um, investment that we made together. And I wired him a hundred thousand dollars as a deposit on this place. Mm-hmm. On a handshake. On a handshake. Yeah. And okay. that goes from your character. Absolutely. That goes from the energy you're giving to the person. And you just know. You know you know that this person isn't scamming me. This person isn't, you know, they're kind of aligned with me. Um, but partners are, partners are um, you know, like what you guys have as a partnership is very rare. And it's very beautiful, too, because you guys aren't. Um, you don't have this struggle like a lot of people have, as in um, ego. Mm-hmm. Ego is very big and mm-hmm. all. It's a deal killer. A, a it's a, yeah. killer. Yeah, it's that, a deal yeah. killer. Mm-hmm. Right. Ego is huge. I'm the boss. None of my guys that work under me, are, I treat them like I'm the boss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to even be that guy. Right. You don't right. want to be the boss. There's some people who think they have to be though. Yeah. They, you don't. They can get <laughs> they can get one dollar a, a month and just feel as long as you tell them the boss, as long as you the boss. Yeah. Yeah. I they'll be like, okay with that. I don't like it. Yeah. I just we're here as a group to get this job done as quick as we can, as cheap as we can. Yeah. And so if, if it takes if it takes me having to be some kind of weird way telling you to get to work earlier, mm-hmm. then that's not a relationship that either of us want. Yeah. yeah. So if, if, if you're sick and you can't come to work, or if you got a, you know, a girl that stayed at your house last night and you can't go to work because you want to stay home. <laughs> that's understandable. Tell me. Yeah. Just say it. Just say it. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make this up on Saturday. Yeah, I'll make I'll... it up to you, though. Mm-hmm. And you should take that in every job that you work, especially mm-hmm. the younger um, audience. Your boss is a person. They understand. They do the same things you do. So tell them, hey, man, I got a hangover. I was faded. Yeah. They'll respect that more than you lying to them. 
and you're building long-term uh, yeah. relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. I learned that from Donald Trump when he said, <laughs> grab him in the pussy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I learned that. I learned that too. You man. know what? Uh, and he still I didn't do it. He though. still won the presidency. I want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't grab do the it. pussy. Don't, don't grab do the it. pussy. Don't yeah. Do don't don't grab. Gra okay. Yeah, it might cost you. Might yeah. cost. Yeah. yeah. Very <laughs> impressive. Cost. That's yeah. one hell of a grab, and hey, yeah, no, no return, yeah. no ROI on that. Yeah. He, but I, I learned from watching too, so you don't always have to get in trouble. If you observe other people, you can. There's lessons in that as well. Yes. So great, Greg. So we touch on relationships. Um, what is the vision? What is the legacy of the hat that you have on? What do you like to see? Uh, Builder T. Gaskin. I'm, I'm, I'm striving for excellent building. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the beginning of my journey. You know, I'm, I'm striving for excellent building. I want, you know, that reputation for, you know, preciseness, precision. Um, um, I want to be very artistic on all my projects I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I want to transfer that just into completely investing in properties and mm -hmm. real estate. You know, like my my father, my my grandfather, my uncles. You know, I kind of want to uh, kind of follow that journey Absolutely. like you guys are, are are doing right now. Right, right. That's that's good. excellent. That's good yeah. to know. And so uh, the future for for T Gaskin. I think we, you know, I <laughs> want to give a our audience a plug real quick because we did an episode in season one on a flip that you did for a family member, right? A flip? Was AD, uh, not, it was I mean, AD, a remodel project. Yeah, yeah. A remodel project. Yeah, remodel yeah, project. yeah, yeah. With an ADU. Maxwell Park yeah. in yeah, Oakland. Yeah, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, was, that beautiful. was a really cool episode for the audience. What would you want the audience to go back and watch that episode for to learn? Um, that you can get creative with spaces. You know, that place was only 300 square feet square feet mm -hmm. you know it's a little box but you know every direction you look in the space is something cool yep. you know you got windows that go up you got uh mac dre e40 yeah, wallpaper yeah you got cool flooring something like this here yeah. and then you know get creative with whatever you do you know if you're just working on your bedroom make it dope Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. make it make it dope. This is uh, you know, you gotta live a fun life. Yes. Um, yeah. and then you know, don't do something just like everybody else does. Get creative. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge lesson for the audience that, that, goes that with thinks anything. they gotta do everything with uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. When shit's when shit's hot, it's probably something you should not. So just do do what is good for you, and you're gonna succeed. You'll be you'll be fine. Yeah. Boom. Bam. Stay true to you. There's more gold than that. Man, I think we, I think we're audience. I appreciate you. You've had cocktails with us. You've had wine with us. Yeah, good wine, too. Man, only oh, the best. Show. You know, and thank you for tuning into the Divine Way where we talk all things real estate. <laughs> Money, motivation, and mindset. I want to give a special thanks to our studio audience. You'll never know who they are, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we want to thank T. Gaskin for coming on the show today and dropping gems. Stay tuned for more special guests. You know, we're gonna to continue to bring millionaires that look like you. If you yeah. don't if you if you don't know T. Gaskin, you're not from the Bay. That's no. just what it is. Hey, <laughs> if you don't know T. Gaskin, you're not from the Bay. That's yeah. hey, I'm gonna rhyme on that one. If you don't need, if you don't know T. Gaskin, and you're not from the Bay. You haven't been to Safeway because I was in Safeway the other day, yeah. and I, I cracked the magazine open. I see this dude's face. Hey. Oh. Hey. Did you buy the magazine? Man, like, let the audience know. How did you get in the magazine? How does that even oh, work? Oh, man. Uh, they called me, man. You know, we were in HGTV magazine. Yeah. I built a little playhouse for my um, nieces and nephews. Uh, yep. And this was a small, This is, I did it as a housewarming gift. Just so here, here you go. <laughs> for my nieces and nephews. And this so thing went It's good crazy. to be in his family. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be in his family. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, you know, I, what I realized when I did that, was that that's kind of a small space. Yeah. Nobody was really doing yeah. dope playhouses. Yeah. And <laughs> so a dope playhouse. Dope playhouse. <laughs> no, no, dope playhouse for money. Nephew, for <laughs> yeah, for my uh, so two dope nephews, playhouse money. Uh, Eli, Gus, 
and my niece Hazel. Beautiful. There is a yeah. lesson in this. You did that out of the kindness of your heart, and look at what it led to. Yes, so. yes, yeah. It led, led to HGTV magazine. So. And, wow. and, and fitted hats. And fitted hats. <laughs> yeah, <those are> cheap. <laughs> I got you guys some hats. I'm going to pull them out after we're done with this. I appreciate that, T. So, you know, again, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, T, you know, just to the audience, you know, we're only a year and a few months into this Divine Way TV thing. We've been doing it behind the scenes for 20 years. It's okay. What do you think the, what would you like to tell the audience about your perception of what we're doing, Divine Way TV? Man, I love what you guys are doing. Um, you know, I'm a guest on your show, but I'm a fan of your show too, because no, this is something you, that man. I wanted, you know, when I was younger. Yeah. You know, it's like a big brother. Like, mm -hmm. man, who do you know out there you can call with for real advice that's actually real people that's going to help, you know, you on your journey. So, you know, I love what you guys are doing. That's why I'm here. I appreciate um, it. I know. thought it was the wine. No, okay, no, no, I appreciate no, no, it. <laughs> no, we get invited to all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> but... Mm -hmm. No, I love what you guys are doing. I, um, you probably don't know it, but you guys are changing, you know, a lot of people's ideas of what they want to do in in, in their futures. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, yeah. man. Good to yeah. hear it too. Yeah. Thank you. That. Appreciate, Appreciate that. that. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, even a little bit of that too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna close this segment out. But last yesterday, I had a coaching call, and what we have been doing on this platform is for five hundred dollars an hour, we will coach you on your investment journey. And I know what you're thinking out there. You're like, God damn, $500 an hour. But when you make $5,000 in an hour, you value your time differently. So what we're giving you is not just advice. We're giving you experience. We're giving you wisdom. So uh, check out our website at Divine Way TV. And if you're interested in coaching, reach out. And, and if you're not, just watch the free content. That's what we're doing it for. So, uh, yeah. Have you, have you guys came across this? Because I have. Yeah, what's that? Folks call me with advice for mm -hmm. advice about what they should do and uh, uh, they don't do it well oh. th that's why that, that's I, I speak on that because is that frustrating or no it, it, is, it is but you just Damn. so i i just plug people with, uh like when i came out here and i was talking to keys i was talking to coleman i was talking to all the people that around they grew up in the bay area just like you and people call me all the time and be like uh because i give game away for free right so yeah you talk to people like yeah do this do this and i was like and that you're building competitors and this is the barrier kind of mindset yeah and i said we're well, absolutely i absolutely am not because i get, you can give everybody all the game and they are not gonna do shit. right now one person that actually does something with the information is go is like you just bring them along with you but the other people i mean they're gonna fall through the cracks because in all reality I man, if you want to become a doctor just read the fucking book and become a doctor like there's the game is already out there. Like right. why are we withholding anything from anybody? Right. Just because ain't nobody gonna do shit. That's just the real fact of right. it. Yeah. Right. Become a doctor if you want to. Just do it. Read the book. Yeah. Take the test. You're good. Yeah. I think it's a big motivation thing too. It's like uh, okay, what can I tell you that's gonna motivate you to actually do what I'm uh, saying? Yeah. Do it's not your because job. it's gonna you know. Yeah. It's gonna I've, work. Got a, I've got a response to that, and I, I think there's a lot of very talented people. Uh, that are sitting out behind our cameras watching this. You're smarter than us. Mm -hmm. You might even have more money, you what know, to your, start now. What were your grades in high school? Eric? <laughs> I was very proud of a C. I was a C student. A C. Well, and hold I'm on. bragging <laughs> C plus. But Tell me your short SAT score. This okay, is before I'm, it changed to like. You, you know, know what? To yeah. all you motherfucking <laughs> smart people who thought you were better, I'm mad at y'all. Yeah. But no, let me hum, let me, too, let me uh, calm down. Okay. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Put your no, 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 I remember being so mad. I'd be go to my friends and be like, "Hey, man, what'd you get on the SAT score?" Yeah. They'd be like, "Oh, I don't want to tell you." <laughs> what, what did you get on your SAT? I'm just curious. Like, we're not competing against each other. Right. Oh, I got a 1200. Man, you smart. I got an 800. Right. I was proud of my 800. I think I that said, was I think said, that was the second time you took it. I, three times. <laughs> I, think mom, I, said, I think my highest number four. My, high, my highest SAT score was 820, and I think you get a 600 for just spelling your name right. Right. So my point is that I wasn't a good test taker. Okay, that that's fine. So do I give up, or do I link up with the smart people in class? Right. And they slide their shoulder over. Yes. 
And you that's hey, you got to form alliances. Whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever Do whatever it, it takes to get the job done. Yeah. Whatever it takes, man. <laughs> Man, what we, it is. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you too. This has been yeah. fun, man. Man, we got a we got a bottle of wine to finish. Okay. Thank work. you for tuning yeah. in. Let's give T Gaskin a round of applause, please. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Appreciate All right. you guys. It's been been fun. Been fun. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna walk away from this. Feeling better about what we what we absolutely doing. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Now, now, yeah. and right. lastly before we close out tell the audience where to find you if you want him to remodel your home folks he's busy apologize he probably can't get to you for a while but yeah how do they find you yeah it's gonna and who finds me is more important <laughs> <laughs> so don't call me to fix your drain <laughs> He's not that guy. Don't call me for a date. <laughs> yeah. Don't call me oh, good. to patch your wall. <laughs> you know. Wait, you just told him not to slide in your DMs. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Head first. Okay. It ain't cool. Feet first. It ain't cool. Okay. We about that business. So oh man, tell call, him. So we're yeah we're we're very busy, but we're doing, you know, we want to do work that we are proud of. Mm -hmm. So you know, call us if you have work that. You know, we can look back on and say, wow, this is dope. And where do they find you, T? At T-E-E -E underscore Gaskin on all platforms. Oh, I like that. All so. platforms. Nice. All right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all right. Thanks for tuning in. And it's time for all happy right. hour. Happy hour. Let's yeah. go. Let's